I said, I'll help with whatever. I'll, I'll help with sound, whatever. We're like, can you play guitar? He's like, yeah. I'm like, great. <laughs> hey, that's where we're at. That's okay, right? Yeah. You glad to be in church? Yeah. Awesome, me too. You grab a seat. Thank you so much. Say hi to somebody. Thank you, team. Thank you, Freddie. Do you like who you sit next to? <laughs> you do. Everyone's like, you're learning. You're learning. You know? You gotta like who you sit next to in church, you know? If you need to apologize right now, just say, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the way we came to church. Have you ever been there? No? Just me? You know, on the way to church? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, help us with the parking lot. God's gonna be good, you know? You know what I think? I, I think that every adversity is an opportunity. It's either, it either is or it isn't, right? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> thank you for laughing. That's how I feel. I'm like, this is either an opportunity or we're going to lose. <laughs> and I don't think that we lose. I think that God is a God that has won. I think that God is victorious. So when we don't have answers, guess who does? God does. I love Sundays because I get to remind myself to put my faith in Jesus, to put my hope in him, remind my own soul that um, we're doing better than we think we are. Not because we're doing good. Because <laughs> sometimes we're not doing great, but God is in control. Amen? Amen. 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 Are you excited to be in church? Yes. I love church. Yeah. I was telling our team this morning, we read Psalm 84. It says to go, we go from strength to strength. Right? Like we're not here to uh, go from weakness to weakness. We're not here to go from failure to failure. It says when you come and you're a part of the house of God, you go from strength to to strength. This is where David said it. Better is one day in your presence than a thousand elsewhere. I love God's presence. Because in God's presence, anything is possible. God can take this howling preacher and he can give you something today. That's how good God is. God can literally take us from our messed up backgrounds, our broken down relationships, our situations and conflicts that seem unrecognizable at times to even us. Hello, somebody. You ever been in a challenge or a fight and it's like, how did it get this bad? Just me. God takes all of that. He takes the broken areas of our lives and he begins to work them out for his good. That's what the Bible says. What the enemy meant for evil. This is a quote. What the enemy meant for evil. Somebody said it. God uses it for good. This is good news. We've got the good news of the gospel. We've got freedom. Do you know there are places in our world right now, they cannot sit and do what we're doing. We are very, very privileged and honored here. Not the way that culture says it, the way that God says it. I've blessed you. I've opened up my heart to you. You can lean into me. You can gather together with other believers and trust God. Amen? Amen. Awesome, awesome. We're going to continue um, a series that we started last week called Stay a While. Who enjoyed last week? Who was here? Stay a while. How many know it's good to stay a while? How many know it's good not to uh, just be a part of something for a moment, but be a part of it for the long haul? How many know when you stay a while, you get to see all sides of things? Amen. Sometimes good, <laughs> sometimes not so good, right? But staying a while is good. If you uh, didn't come last week, um, unfortunately, you don't get extra points in heaven. <laughs> so it's, it is what it is. Uh, you just, your house won't be as nice as mine in heaven. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. But, um, I'm just kidding. Uh, some of you are like, seriously? I'm not kidding. Um, you know what we say about the Bible, right? A dirty Bible. Clean life. Wow, we don't get it yet. Wow, all right, we keep doing it. A dirty Bible, you know, your Bible's messed up, page is all torn up, you know, means your life is shining bright. It's great. You know, whose Bible glows? Lift your Bible up real quick it glows. What does that mean? Glow in life. What am I trying to get you to do here? Just respond, you know, your basic response. Just like, hi. You know. We are not spectators. We are participators. We participate in the gospel. We, we're not here to observe God. We're here to participate in what God is doing. Um, I believe that. I don't want to be um, a, the pastor that everyone focuses on and the guy on stage. Um, that's not why we're here. We're here to build the community of faith together. And as we do that, we're going to see God do great things. I'm so excited. As you stay a while, we're going to have Ohana Roos. I'm pumped about it. 
You know, we took um, what was on this island years ago, you know, Pastor Wayne, and you've got Ralph Moore, and you've got all these amazing men of God that have gone before us on this island. I'm so proud to be able to be here right now. But, you know, they built these great communities. You've got Inspired Church and Mike Kai and other great pastors. On. They're doing great things. But how many know that God is doing something right now, but he's also going to continue to do something? Amen. Isn't that good news? Amen. We're going to honor the past and look to it, but we're also looking to the future. There's so many great churches and leaders here on the island, and we're joining our faith with them and believe in God that the best days are ahead. Amen. Amen. So Ohana Rooms, it's a place where we get to grow our faith. We make a kind of big church, not really that big yet, but kind of big church, small, intimate, connected, we can get to do life with people during the week. So it's going to be exciting. So stay a while. It's going to be good. That's it. God bless you. Have a great week. Some people are like, yeah, that'd be kind of great, actually. I like that. It's, at least it's cool in here. You know, I, I'm from New York, so like one thing I couldn't come to Hawaii and have was hot church. It just was not going to work for me. Hot church was not going to work. I need, uh, I need to, I get hot easily, and my wife knows. Um, thank God she likes it cool too. It's important. It's important for our marriage. Um, this is not to do my message. Let's pray. Cool it. Jesus, I thank you that you are good and you are faithful. And God, I thank you that um, you're going to take this normal message by a normal man and you're going to breathe on it. God, I thank you that as we open up our word, it's going to change our lives from the inside out. In Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. amen. All right, so would you turn with me to John 15. We're going to read a passage that we read last week. It's going to set the table for our, uh, our message today. And John 15, I love this. We're going to start in verse 1. But Jesus, just while you're finding it and you're searching in your Bibles, I see all of you moving feverishly. There. And I hear pages turning. You know, I hear you really locking and loading. You know, you're taking out your pads. You know, taking notes because you know that church is just about Sunday. It's about Monday. And, you know, you're doing that right now. I, I see you all right now just not looking at me. You're writing. You're getting ready to write. You write and stay a while on the top of your notes. I see it. I see it all happening. Even if I'm saying it in faith. I'm seeing it happen in Jesus' name. Um, but we're going to read this. Jesus is giving what many theologians refer to as his farewell discourse. So this is the night before Jesus dies. Um, and on the third day, he rises again. We're going to celebrate that in a couple of weeks. Um, but this is his farewell discourse. He's talking to us before he dies. And how many know right before people die, they say some important things. And so we're going to read words from Jesus. Is that cool? Okay, great. So it says this. I am the true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my, is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up each fruitless branch and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. I love that he prunes the fruitful. Isn't that interesting? Sometimes you're like, I'm being challenged. I'm up against opposition. I'm struggling. I must be doing something wrong. Actually, no. It says he prunes the fruitful. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's good news right there. Yeah. Who's been through a hard time or a difficult challenge or been corrected lately? Yeah. I know I have. Guess what? He prunes the fruitful. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Hello. I don't know why I said that way. It just felt good. <laughs> so you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union. With you, for as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. God's not talking about Jesus isn't talking about houses and cars and boats and stuff. He's talking about real fruit. He's talking about hope, joy, peace, the things that matter. If you want those things, you gotta stay connected to him. Hello, somebody. So all you thought this was a prosperity gospel church. Not funny. I am sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source. Somebody say source. I love that word. Fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches are gathered and thrown up into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire, and it will be done. That's good news, huh? Yeah. 
When your life bears abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciple who glorifies my Father. Some people need to hear this. This is good news. So when your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciple who glorifies my Father. Do you got fruit? Do you show fruit during the week? Does Instagram see your fruit? Hello. <laughs> Does your DM see your fruit? Mm. It's funny how you can face one way and write another way. Okay, moving on. I, leave, I, I love each of you with the same love that my father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. We're going from fruit to love right now. It says, how do you do all this by love? If you keep my commands, you will live in my love just as I have kept my father's commands. For I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. So this is my command. In, ver in verse 17, he says, this is my parting command. This is the last thing I'm going to tell you. He goes, love each other deeply as much as I love you. You. Somebody say, stay a while. Stay a while. How many know when we're reading the word of God, it's changing our lives? Do you know the Bible says that faith comes by hearing? So right now, in this atmosphere, you're sitting here looking at me crazy. Again, by the way, I don't know why you keep doing that. But when you're looking at me like, wait, when you're reading God's word, it's actually nourishing and changing your life. You're, you're feeling the life gift of God when you're listening to the word of God. Isn't that great news? So when you read God's word, you're not getting information. You're getting revelation. It's changing your life. Do you know during the week that we planted seeds last Sunday? And do you know this week you have grown? Amen. You're doing better than you think you are? Amen. Do you know God's growing you even right now? Amen. How many people can say since they came, started coming here, that their life has started to change a little bit, that God's doing something? Can you just raise your hand? That's fruit. Amen. There's fruit in your life. God's doing something. Some of you might be like, it's been harder. Well, guess what? He prunes the fruitless ones and the fruitful ones, and he begins to shift things you have. So I believe even while you're going through difficult times, God is still at work. The Bible says, Paul says, perseverance builds character, and character gives us hope for the future. Amen. So as you persevere and go through it and you stay a while, you see God do great things. Amen. I'm a crammer. We're going to cram last week into a quick moment, and then we're going to go to part two. Is that okay? Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. So if you weren't here last week, I'm going to recap quickly. It's not like I don't talk fast or anything. <laughs> Number one, when you love, when love becomes a decision, your faith seeds become trees that produce both natural and supernatural fruit. Jesus said, I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. My question for you today is who is your source? I love that word source, right? I had you say it. If, if, if money is your source, it's the thing you think about the most. What dominates your mind? What dominates your mind will dominate your life. What dominates your mind? Negative thoughts? What dominates your mind? A relationship that you shouldn't be in? What dominates your thoughts? Somebody who hasn't been doing the right thing to you? What dominates your job? How awful your job is? Whatever that dominates you controls you. Whatever, whatever you think most about, that's what you become. What do you focus on the most? What is your source? What is the thing you are most connected to? Some of us just like to be comfortable. Hello, somebody. And we don't want anything to challenge us. We like our little comfortable box. I get to think about the ocean and the birds and the island, and it's so great living in paradise. It is, but let's be honest, some of us lived here for a little while, it's not perfect. That's right. And how many know you need to find a source that's better than what the world has? God has his source for you, and it is his word, and it is our relationship with Jesus. Because at some time in your life, your source that you currently have will run dry. And then you will have to find a different source. And then what happens is we find ourselves flagging in the faith because we forgot our source. Our source is God. Some of you are recommitting your lives back to Jesus and his word and to church and a healthy atmosphere. Guess what happens next? You realize again your source and then fruitfulness begins to flow from your life. How many know that that's good news? 
What's so awesome about that is that we're talking about just staying a while. We're talking about just staying attached. And some of us are like, what do I have to do? How do I do this? Oh my God, what do I read? Oh my God, this is overwhelming. You know what's so good about being in church? You know what's so good about just showing up? You know what's so good about being in a healthy community? You just stay connected to God, and then your life starts to flourish. And then people go, how the heck did that happen in their life? Well, I'll be honest, we can't really take credit for it. God did it. Yeah. Somebody say, God did it. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know why I have to do that. God did it. TD Jakes, God did it. Maybe they'll pay for it. Okay. <laughs> God did it. Maybe they'll pay for it. Hey, that's a good one. You know, tell the truth, shame the devil. There's some good ones out there. This is the church I grew up in. It was a white, stuffy church. Just get out there. Number two, when love becomes a decision, you choose community over comfort. Ooh. Man, it's easy to stay comfortable right now. Oh, I just, I like to float. We talked about this last week, right? I'm just a floating Christian. I go to a bunch of different churches. Oh, really? That's great. That sounds very comfortable. But that's not building anything. Floaters don't build. Have you seen a floating tree? It doesn't, no, you haven't. It doesn't last long. You want to be an air plant? Nobody wants to be an air plant. <laughs> oh, gosh, the things that go through my mind. Um, I believe that God's called us to be planted. I believe, I'm sorry. God has called us to be, I was apologizing to a family member. God, has, God called us to be planted. He called us to be connected to one another. As we are connected to the source, Jesus, guess what? Fruitfulness flows from our lives. People are like, I know, I'm here, okay, move on. I get it. <laughs> you cannot love people deeply by judging them cheaply. And we have a culture that loves to judge people cheaply. We have a community that will not do that. We will be people that are not part of a hookup culture. Hello, somebody. We have a hookup culture. Do you know what I mean by that? Oh, we hook up to this, and then we hook up to that, and then we hook up. And you know what we never do? We never look deep than what's just on the surface. Yeah, yeah. And so our whole lives are, and by the way, it's, we're not just talking about men and women, we're talking about churches, we're talking about everything in our, we just want it fast, quick, and we want out. That is not building anything, and guess what? That temporarily fulfills a desire, but ultimately will bring no sustaining joy, will bring you no real fruit. That is why we choose community over comfort. We know that although this might feel good in the moment, it will not last. We need to be in a community of faith, believe in God together. And as we do that, all of a sudden, our lives begin to grow. You know what's been happening here? So this has been really cool. It's not just one person, by the way. People come up to me in church here and go, oh, my God, they, they come here? <laughs> they, people go, like, oh, my God. So-and-so, she, she, she comes to your church. I just saw her. Wait, so-and-so's on the stage? What? This is happening all the time right now. I think it's amazing. You want to know why I think it's amazing? Because it's a small island? Yeah, it is. But you know what I also think is amazing? People aren't saying bad things. They're saying, oh, I knew him when he was a kid. Oh, I knew him back in the day. I knew Gabe. <laughs> hey, why y'all laugh? Hey, don't laugh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and you're seeing him being tremendously fruitful. Oh, you're seeing his marriage flourish. Oh, you're seeing his children flourish. Oh, oh, you mean, you mean he got connected to something healthy and now I'm getting emotional. His life is growing. Oh, so and so. Oh, you knew them back at the club. Oh, you knew them when they used to live like that. Oh, you knew them back in school when they were known for this and now they are known for that. Stay a while. I will not judge cheaply. I will love deeply. I will not judge cheaply. I will not look at the Instagram photo of people's lives. I will stay around for the story. I will see what God is doing. 
I will not look at the surface. I will dive into deep love with one another. And I will see God do great things. That's who I will be. That's what we will be. We will be a community of faith. Believe in God. And you know what we're going to do? When someone does fall, because they will. They will make mistakes. You know what we're going to do? We're going to cover them. Amen. And we're going to love them more. Right. And we're going to say, hey, the same grace I was given, I'm giving to you. Yeah. And the same grace that saved me is going to save you. Right. And the same love that I deserve, that I didn't deserve that was extended to me, I'm going to give to you. Yeah. And then before you know it, you don't have a bunch of religious people. You have a bunch of people in relationship and their lives are flourishing from the inside. I think so. I mean, you know, I, I, I took a second and thought about it for a minute, but I just think this is good. This is good. You can stand up. Just tell the truth that you and the devil. You, some of you want to stand up right now. You can stand up and start laughing. I'm down. I'm down. Hey, we got to live this out. I'm, I'm not going to just stand right now and wait for somebody else to do it. This time is now. Where's my friend Mel? Where's Mel? Mel, I love you. You know what Mel told me today? She, she said to me, you texted me a while ago. You said, if not us... Who? If not now. If not us. If not now. That's how I feel. I'm in. I'm giving everything I got. I'm just recapping right now, which is a big problem. <laughs> this is what happens every week. You know what happens, right? You know what's always happening? God's moving. Oh, God is moving. <laughs> I feel his presence. Do you? I, I feel his ple presence. I also feel his pleasure. Isn't that beautiful? When you start getting, you know how you know you're in the right place? You start feeling God's pleasure. You start being like, man, I think God likes me. <laughs> you know what's the difference between love and like? I could love you but not like you. You know what I'm saying? I have to love you. But liking you, I think God likes you. And I think he wants you to experience that. As you get into community, this is where it's rich. This is where you grow. This is where deep things begin to happen in your life. And it begins to transform your life from the inside out. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Oh, I have to say one more thing. Is that okay? Can I stay here one more second? I have to say this. I've been thinking about it. You ever, you ever um, in your life, have you ever saw somebody and turned your head and looked? Have you ever looked twice? Be honest. You ever seen anyone beautiful? Let's just put it out there. Or handsome and looked once and maybe looked twice. I think we need a turning heads type of gospel. I think that the gospel is a turning. I think that people should see you and not look once, but look twice. I think that the way that we're going to see God begin to move and change things is not people just go, oh, there's so-and-so. They look back and they go, oh, they, did you just see so-and-so? What happened to them? They look happy. <laughs> they, they look like something's changing on them. I know who they used to be, but I think we need a turning heads type gospel. I love what it says. It, may, it leaves no excuse. It says, hey. We'll look, and Jesus says, we'll judge a tree by its fruit. In fact, he saw fruitless, a fruitless tree once, and you know what he did? He cursed it and killed it. He's like, goodbye. Go bye-bye. <laughs> I wonder that there are branches right now that might be being moved, removed, and my heart is not to judge those branches, my heart is to make sure that I get connected to the life source so God can pr prune me and prop me up and help me grow. We've got a turning heads type gospel. I pray that the gospel is causing people in your life to turn their heads. To go, what is going on with Ashley? What is going on with Pope? What is happening in Paul's life? I can't believe it, what God did in so and so. I, wow, wow. I want to be talking about people, but I want to be saying really good things. Hello, somebody. Talk about people. Just say really good things. Guard your tongue. Hello. That's another message for another day. Stop being a dad. 
On Monday, a reminder, you are not always like what you see, but you have to choose to love what you see. I talked about this last week. We can't spend a lot of time on it. You might not always like what you see. Heads up. Come to church. Be a part of a growing community. Things are not going to be perfect here. Get used to it. Get over it. Or, I don't know, find a place that everyone thinks looks and talks like you. This ain't it. Is that okay? Who's in agreement with that? I don't want a place that makes me feel comfortable. I don't want a place that everything looks perfect. Because guess what? Nothing is ever really always perfect. It's going to look messy. And guess what? The bigger church gets, the more people come here with trickled down issues and challenges from their past experiences, the more this will become a hospital for the sick, hurting, and broken. Are you okay with that? Because that's what I want. I want a place that people can come and they feel safe. They feel protected. I felt like God told me, and this is real quick, I'm going to take a, a detour. I felt good this week that God was going to do two things with our church. You want me to tell you what it is? Yes. I think he's going to make this a safe house. And he's going to make it a quiet garden. A safe house and a quiet garden. So a safe house, real quick. What is a safe house? A place that brings protection. It's where people can go where they need to be protected. That's what this will be. Is that okay? It's going to be a safe house. If somebody comes in here and they are struggling and they are hurting and you maybe know something, I need you to go the extra mile to make sure they feel safe. Can you do that for me? Can you commit to that? I'm learning about this island. I was in New York City. There were 25 million people. You should never see the same person twice. I can say whatever I want to you right now. You know the crazy thing is? I am going to say something you're not going to like. Guaranteed. I probably already have. I need you to create a safe place. You got to create it in your soul before you can live it outside of your soul. You got to create a safe place. And people are safe with me. They can come to me. They can bring their challenges, their baggages. I don't talk smack about them. I don't back talk them and after I'm done. No, I love them. I'm gracious to them. I watch my tongue. I'm careful. This is a safe house. Number two, a quiet garden. Have you ever walked into a garden that is abundantly fruitful or a farm that's got stuff growing all over it? We got a dream for a farm, which I'm going to talk about today. But, but you ever walk into a really, like, when there's, there's stuff growing everywhere? Is it loud? I was thinking about how quiet a garden is. I love a place that doesn't have a lot to say, but produces a whole lot. Imagine a farm that can produce so much food that can feed the community. We won't have to say much. In fact, it would be a peaceful place, but it nourishes people literally from the inside out. I want to be a quiet garden. I don't want to be a talkative garden. I want to be a garden that produces healthy fruit and other people can enjoy the fruit of my life. God told Abraham, we're going to talk about money a whole bunch in this church. Yeah, I said it. Jesus talked about money seven times more than love. Go look it up. If you don't believe me, read every scripture about money and every scripture about love and you'll figure it out. And then you'll learn a lot more. I want to be a place. Abraham said, I'll be a blessing. God said to Abraham, I'll bless you so you can be a blessing. What does that mean? We're not just talking about money. Get your head out of the gut. We're talking about everything. You should be blessed. So you can create spaces of blessing for people. Yeah. I want to be a quiet garden and a safe house. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, we'll get back to you. But I just want to talk about our church for a second. Is that okay? Because yeah. you're, you're a part of our church. It's like, no, I'm not. I just came here for the first time. I'm not even sure. I, don't, I definitely don't like you. <laughs> this is really close. <laughs> Keyboard, move out of the way. Okay, should we jump into part two? We probably should. I've only got 11 minutes left. <laughs> should we do part three? I like this. Stay a while. Stay it will force you to come back, you know? It's like, no, I won't come back either way. Okay, stay a while. Part three. Part two. When love becomes a decision, you find other local stayers. When love becomes a decision, you will find other local stayers. There's a saying, birds of a feather flock together. Right? We got 11 minutes left. You can hang on with me. Come on, stay with me. Local stayers. Um, I've been here for a little while now, and if you ask any one of you what the definition of a local is, you will all give me different answers. 
Go ahead. Tell me in unison what a local is. Who's a local? I, some people said I won't be a local until I'm 80. Some people said I'll never be a local. My kids might be if they're born here, which they're, none of them are. So are they? I don't know. You're only a local if... Is this touching a hard Is this like hard? Is people offended? <laughs> but it's true. Like, am I local? Will I ever be local? I don't know. I, I honestly... If you, if you, there's local and there's local Hawaiian. Yeah. Watch yourselves. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, like, I'm, there's a good chance I'll never, I'm settled in. I'm not going to be local here, okay? Um, Why well, is this so funny? Like, and then there's like, there's local, local. I don't know, what does that mean? Like, he's local, local. What, I, when they say, like, I don't know what that means. How local is local, local? How many generations do you have to be to local? I don't know. And you could be like a hybrid. You could be, you could be a Hawaiian and not be local. I was like, what? I learned that the other day? I'm like, I, live up, I grew up on the Ninth Island, Vegas. I'm like, what? You could be in Hawaii. Wait, you could be Hawaiian, not grow up in the United You're never local. I'm so confused. It's just confusing, to be honest. You guys have confused me. I'm a howly. I'm confused. That's all. That's that point. Moving on. I think we will find other local stayers. What's a local stayer? I love background. I love where we came from. I love the islands. I love, Katie and I, we are so happy here. People like wonder, are you guys gonna stay? No, we like love it. Like it's amazing. I think our whole lives is a combination of coming to this moment. We're pumped about it. But I'll tell you this, it's like two years down the road, we'll see. Yeah. Right? <laughs> wow. I wanna have a spirit that is, I'm local. And I don't mean local on the island. Let's not focus here. I'm talking about a local spirit of, hey, I'm a local builder. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, this is my local community. This is where I'm building. Do you know what you have during the holidays? You can say it, it's okay. Tourists. We have, we have a lot of tourists. Tourists, 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 Christians. Tourists, I'm from Long Island. What do you want from me? Katie, help me. Tourist. Tourist. How beautiful is my wife's voice? <laughs> Tourist. We have a lot of holiday type believers. We have people that are just holidaying their faith. They, if, when it feels good, they watch the podcast. Oh, that sermon clip, clip, clip was great, but that one's not so much. I don't believe that we're supposed to be holiday Christians. I believe we're supposed to be local Christians. And the beauty of finding local Christians is that you find on the journey when you are committed locally, you find other local Christians. And then you know what happens? You find just not local, you find loyalty. I, that Lord, I, as I get older, like loyalty makes me really happy. Like when I was younger, it was like, I want gifting. Now I just want loyalty. Yeah. <laughs> I told people, you gonna stick around? <laughs> Is that not funny? Like you know, like, you know, you wanted just, you wanted beautiful, you wanted amazing, you wanted this, you wanted feeling good, and now you're just like, hey, you you gonna you gonna stick with me? I, that's what happens with love. Love is it grows. It's not now a feeling. It's now an actual decision. And when love becomes a decision, it's a game changer. And then before you know it, now you're growing locally together. And you guess what? Nothing can stop that when you find local loyal lovers who believe in your future and what God has for you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Last week was a little better. That's point three for the part two. That was good. Imagine you start judging the messages. It's called consumerism Christianity. It was so good last week. This week, mm, mm. that's not local. That's touristy. <laughs> kind of like Hawaii. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> A little kakaako, maybe. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> First Corinthians, we only got six minutes left. This is terrible. First Corinthians 13, 5. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. It's easy to find tourists during the holiday season, but I'm looking for local stayers. Church is made up of, the truth be told, three parts. A crowd, a community, and a core. 
every church. It's not a bad thing. By the way, the crowd follows Jesus everywhere. There's nothing wrong with the crowd. There'll be a crowd. I like him. I don't like him. I want to watch magic shows. I think this is amazing. I want to watch him prophesy. I want to watch him heal the sick. I want to watch him do like special things. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I don't really believe this. I'm just checking it out. This crowd. Crowd's not bad. Crowd comes. Crowd gets plugged in. Crowd also brings attention. Crowd's a great thing. Then there's community. And what we want to be is not a part of a crowd. We want to be part of a community. Communities build. Communities stick together. And then there's a core. There's a remnant. There's the people that are not just in community. They are praying for the community. We need people praying for this right now. I, I woke up in the middle of the night last night and I just felt like God said, hey, we need people praying. I, I wake up in the middle of the night praying. Who, who does that? And by the way, don't, you know, don't raise your hand. Sorry, that makes me feel. Sorry, there's a bunch of these. I don't want to judge anyone else. But we need you to keep praying. I know who you are. You need to keep praying. We need remnant type prayer people. We need people that are praying for this. Because I tell you something, prayer is the silent garden. Prayer is powerful. Oswald Chambers says prayer is the work. Sometimes we think that this is the work. No, prayer is the work. There is time. My dad, my grandmother, I've got, I have got. am a product of prayer. There have been people praying for you. Believe in God for you. It is important that we are praying for one another. You with me? Okay, I'm going to go quickly to the next point. I'm just excited because I think God's moving. Come on. Are you with me? Yeah. Freddie, please come up here and make this sound more spiritual. <laughs> you find other local stayers. We have to do part three for sure because there's no way. This is no way. And I want to tell somebody this. I really believe this. And I, I put this in my notes. And this is more about um, something I just want to. You know, there are times that I'm going to be preaching. There are times that I'll be teaching. Um, but there's some times that I just feel like God, like, put something on my heart. And I want to share it with you. Is that okay? So right now, I really believe. I believe in a principle. And I believe in, in, in a... I'll say this. I'll believe in something that I've experienced over and over again. And I, I, we, could, we could argue about even theology about this. But I, I want to say something to you. I believe that the enemy loves to discourage you right before God nourishes you. Do you hear me? I believe one of the enemy's main ploys, because he's a liar. That's what he is the other day. He wants to discourage you right before God nourishes you and I just believe that there's a lot of you right now you have felt really really discouraged who am I how do I fit in where do I belong what gives me a right you don't know what I've done you don't know what I've been through the enemy wants to discourage you he wants you to feel this big you need to remind him though how big your God is your God is bigger than your problems He's bigger than your anxiety. He's bigger than your fear. He's bigger than, bigger than your worry and your torment. He's bigger than the thing that's tried to overwhelm you and tried to stop you and tried to discourage you and tried to cut you off. And I think today that God is bringing you freedom. I think today God wants to break chains off of your mind and off of your heart and make you realize that you're not alone. And some of you, you have felt like, man, I am all alone in this. And can I tell you, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You are not alone. God is with you. There are some of you in this room, even God's been moving on your heart. And you have felt the, the, the pruning. You have felt like God wanted to correct things and change things. When you're like, I don't know how to do it. Guess what? It's a simple word. It's called surrender. And it's not what you're holding on to. So some of you are like, I can't fix this. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I don't know how to get out of this. I want you to know the next step for you. It's a simple word. It's called surrender. It's letting go of things that we've been, you've been holding on to. And I think some of you, there have been mindsets. Hello, somebody. There's thinking patterns. It's okay to say. There are things you've been thinking about over and over again. And it's robbed you. It's robbed you of your future. It's made you think, I'll never get this. Because the enemy has told you and you've learned helplessness. We learned about that a few weeks ago. It's literally a psychological term. You can learn helplessness. But I believe that God wants us to learn hopefulness. And when we learn hopefulness, you know where we find that? In God's word. And so what I want you to do is find some local, find a community of faith 
Join our Ohana room. We're going to have them all over the island. We feel like God's called us here to serve Waimanalo and reach the island, islands for Jesus. We don't know what God's going to do next. I told you this. When we started this church, I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know if it was just going to stay at my house. I didn't know if it was going to grow past this room. I didn't know where we were going to add a second service. And you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know what's next. And if there's a leader out there, Pastor Mike will tell you the same thing. We don't know. But we know God is moving. We know he's moving, and he's about to do something new, and he's about to bring, bring something fresh. And guess what? As we join our faith together and trust God, we're going to see God do great things in the days ahead. But you got to find some stairs. you got to find some local stairs who are not friends of your past, but are friends of your future. And I think some of you in this room, you have just had people that you've just had around to have around. And I want you to know, I want you to invite them and encourage them to come to church. I believe that we're going to see a lot of people receive Jesus in just a moment. A bunch of people are. But I want to tell you this. you got to find people who are friends of your future. Not critics of your past. Not critics of what was. Not critics of what used to be. Not critics of looking at what, what, you, what how it should go back to this or to that. No, you need people that are future builders with you. People who are committed to your future. People who love you even when you're unlovely. Even when you don't have together and I believe as we do that God is going to do great things amen amen I'm going to ask you to take a moment and just to bow your head and close your eyes and if you're in this room I just want to pray for a group of people first of all that may not even know who Jesus is you hear me talking about Jesus and you're like man I've tried religion before in fact I've been hurt by religion I've been hurt by church I've been hurt by man, I've been hurt by women, I've been hurt by people. I want you today to know today, I'm not asking you to receive a church or to receive a theology or a religion. I'm asking you to receive Jesus. What Jesus says is that when you get connected to him, fruitfulness flows from the inside of you. And maybe you're in here and you have tried everything else. So you've connected yourself to things that you know ultimately will not satisfy, like sex and money and drugs and alcohol and things that you thought were going to make you happy. But instead of making you free, they put you in slavery and bondage. And you know that you need freedom. And the only thing that will give you freedom is Jesus. I'm not talking about temporary freedom. I'm not talking about freedom for just a couple hours so you feel good. I'm talking about soul freedom. I'm talking about freedom. Freedom that when you leave this earth, even though you may experience death in a moment, life comes after because we believe in the power of Jesus. And we believe, as we're going to celebrate in a couple weeks, that 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross for your sins and for mine, for my shame and my mistakes. And he died and rose again so that I could have life and have that life more abundantly. If you have been far from God, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Do not wait another moment. I'm going to ask you to just lift up your hand and say, hey, can you pray for me? I need Jesus in this room. I need to, I need a relationship with God again. I've tried everything else, but I need Jesus. I just want you to lift your hand. No one looking around. This is between you and God. I see you. Your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hand. I'm going to wait one more moment. If your heart is beating out of your chest and you're saying, I'm not sure about God, you need to know today He is sure about you. You can lift your hand and join these people. 